Charles Bronfman, Shalom. Shalom. Good to speak here with you, Abiel. And welcome to Culture Buzz. <laughs> I am pleased to be with Culture Buzz, although I'm mostly a sports person. Charles, if I may. Yes. We were very impressed by a very special event that took part last week in the Tel Aviv Museum, mm -hmm. uh, during which you have awarded a very special prize, the Andy Prize, to Shirley Ben Amots. Right. Will you be kind enough, Charles, to share with us your thoughts, your feelings when it comes to this prize? This is a prize that, uh, in conjunction with uh, Rivka Sacker and the curator we have in New York, and Janet Aviad, who does our philanthropy in Israel, uh, I did secretly with them uh, for my late wife's 60th birthday. And she was in on the planning at the end, because she found out about it, of course. And uh, she was there for the first prize uh, giving, and the speaker was Elisa Olmert, not as the Prime Minister's wife, but as an artist herself. A painter. A painter and a sculptor a sculpt and, and, a, and a photographer True. and a playwright and a few other things. She had a wonderful woman. A Renaissance woman. Absolutely. And uh, uh, this was a wonderful occasion and she was thrilled and uh, we've kept the prize going ever since after she passed away, unfortunately. And it's just beautiful. So many friends come every year to participate. It was the first time it was done at the Tel Aviv Museum in the new building. And the garden was lovely and everybody had a very good time. And this year was particularly poignant because it was done on my late wife's birthday. Very special. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So we've awarded this prize about six times now uh, to uh, Shirley, of course, to other ceramists, to jewelers. Uh, it's become quite something. And, of course, Charles Bronfman needs no introduction, especially your philanthropy. When it comes to Israeli artists, especially giving them the chance of shining abroad. So how did this all start? Well, this was really not me, honestly. I love taking credit for the things I'm involved with, but I have the uh, temerity to uh, not to try to, to do things, to say about things I didn't do. This is really my late wife and a couple in the United States named Dale and Doug Anderson who are very Jewish. And uh, the idea was to bring Americans uh, who loved uh, uh, the decorative arts, particularly glass, to Israel. And these are people who would otherwise not go to Israel. And so it was a ruse, if you want, to get them to love this country. However, along came the Intifada, just as this was being planned. And I remember my late wife and uh, Dale Anderson saying, well, if we can't take them to Israel, let Israel come to us. It's similar to the phrase about Muhammad and the mountain. Right, right. And, uh, and so it started, and it's been a, a roaring success, and many... Israeli artists have both improved themselves, have sold merchandise, and they've gone to uh, not only the big shows, but they've also gone to craft shows and done very well. And now, uh, Doug Anderson is running it with hardly any overhead, and we're giving scholarships to people to go to uh, Haystack in Maine and Pilchuck in, uh, in the state of uh, Washington, and uh, life goes on, and we're also bringing American artists over to Israel to give master classes. Really impressive. Yeah. Can I ask you, when you look at Israeli culture, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? It's again something that is very close to me because I've always felt that there are two great Jewish societies uh, in the world. Uh, and I didn't know about the Russian society very much until after the Russian Aliyah started. Uh, but it was to me North America and Israel. And I always thought that if these two cultures of Jews could have some empathy for each other, then we could together realize the dreams 
of our ancestors who fought and worked and suffered so that we could be having this very nice interview in this fancy hotel in Jerusalem. Lucky and, us. And Israeli culture certainly lends something to us. And the artists today, the uh, whether it's the painters, the sculptors, and uh, I must say that a very dear a friend of mine is a great painter, a great artist in Israel. Uh, but that just imbues us with uh, more uh, more stuff from the heart. And I think that uh, a lot of what's happening in North America comes this way. So there is that blending together. And I think we'll find that Jewish art, whether it's Israeli, North American, or perhaps uh, Eastern European, will uh, emerge and evolve over time. Basically, we are talking about a cultural bridge. Yes. Made possible by your generosity. Well, no, made possible by a lot of people. That's, uh, that's and the real. talents of many people. The talents of many people, the generosity of many people, and the passion of many people. The passion. You know, Aviad, I think you'll agree, if there's no passion, there's not very much. Fully agree. Fully agree. What can we wish uh, Charles Bronfman for the future, for the present? <laughs> Charles Bronfman is uh, very much in love with a woman he's known for 30 years who will be his wife on September the 7th. Hey, so Mazalto, should, Mazalto so is in order. Thing, the best thing you can wish me is in the first place she's much younger, so long life and good health, Chaim. Absolutely. And uh, Mazalto. Toda. Toda Rabba.